You are watching Ukraine Today, where we are joined by Mr. Dmitro Shimkiv, the Deputy Head of the Presidential Administration of Ukraine. Mr. Shimkiv, thank you very much for joining us. So, last year, Ukraine initiated a package of reforms. They even described this themselves as mission impossible. Can you tell us about the progress of these reforms? I think that the, uh, the government agenda and the president's vision uh, been going forward was a very, very big areas for the reform. Uh, when we look today into multiple areas, uh, we see good progress in many of them, somewhere high, somewhere low. Um, if we, we establish National Reform Council as a platform uh, where President, Prime Minister and the Parliament sits together uh, with the Cabinet of Ministers and civil society and discuss key reform agenda, when we look in today, uh, we had 11 meetings already over the last nine months, was, uh, meetings lasting up to three hours, deep, deep discussion about reforms, agreeing on the decisions. If you're looking at what was done, if you look at anti-corruption, on anti-corruption we have established the necessary institution, we have the head of the anti, uh, National Anti-Corruption Bureau, we have detectives which are going through the training and they should be fully operational uh, in October. We expect in the, uh, to have an anti-corruption prosecutor in November so that this will get to the courts. We established the um, uh, prevention mechanism with a with uh, special commission. Um, still, uh, we have cases with uh, arrest of uh, corruption, individu corrupted individuals. Uh, we need to get more of this uh, to the courts, but also talking about the prevention. Anti-corruption is one of the topest priority for us, but this connects with the rule of law and the court system, reform of the court system. Uh, we started it in January with, uh, with the law uh, related to the judges and their um, accreditation and standards of how the judges should be performing. And then we're going further. Uh, currently, there is a two proposal uh, reviewed by Venice Commission. We expect in mid of October the report, and we will have end of October the National Reform Council discussing particularly the uh, judicial reform. A um, uh, great example of the uh, municipal police or uh, police, patrol police. Uh, we see them on the streets of Kiev. Uh, and uh, they're the most popular people to take a selfie, actually, globally. I don't, haven't seen so much appreciation from a small to oldest people in Ukraine who like these people and their commitment to the country. We establish electronic procurement system, uh, which is now running. Uh, it's one of the best, actually, in globally. A lot of people are looking at what we've done, where today more than a billion uh, grivnas, uh, volume of uh, tenders are currently uh, traded there. Uh, we saving between uh, 12 to 25 percent on savings. Uh, we established um, uh, electronic petitions as a form of de 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 democracy. And yesterday we published the report, uh, the first answer of the president to some of these petitions. Um, uh, Ministry of Finance opened uh, e-data portal where you can actually see in all the transactions that's happening by the government. So it's about transparency. Multiple laws been adopted in the deregulation driven by Minister of Economy. Uh, Ministry of Justice established a lot of uh, activities where they eliminating middlemen or middle people uh, in the way how to receive certificates. Recently, there was a, a possibility to get birth certificates immediately in the birth house. So, when we look at uh, National Bank of Ukraine, one of the leaders, uh, cleaning the financial system, removing insolvent banks making national bank independent, increasing reserves, um, there is a, a saving money, debt restructuring, this is again big thing, uh, done by Ministry of Finance, increasing uh, tariffs which never been before, the, and it's always been the case on agenda for uh, so many years uh, for Ukrainian government, um, a lot of energy reforms there, and uh, Nafta Gas and Mr. Kobolev uh, driving this. Uh, reform in the prosecutor offices has been kicked off, and this is another big area where, which is particularly related to fighting corruption. Um, I can go on and on and on on a lot of things that have been started. Uh, started. We, have, we made a comprehensive report for six months what was done by the government. In very, very bullet things, you can find it on the reforms in UA. Uh, we continue to drive this. At the same time, we have obstacles, and we know about that. We have a situation where uh, we have oligarchy, which are controlling media and trying to stop some of the things, and they have vested interest. 
we have um, uh, corrupted individuals who are trying to retain their positions. Um, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, populism in the society, which is rocking the boat in front of the uh, local elections. We kicked, I forgot to mention, decentralization, a very, very important reform where we give more power to the regions, increasing their financial already this year with the, with the government initiative, giving them more 38% of extra budget for this year. So, Mr. Shimkiv, you talk about the prevention of corruption. What is the key to this? Is it transparency or is it something else? Well, there's multiple things. Um, First, it's about telling, uh, so transparency, yeah, using electronic ways so that there is a, people can see what transaction taking place, who is involved, who is making decision. Also, any e-government introduction, this is a way to remove um, anybody from, as a middleman, in the right direction between business or citizen with the government. So this is, we all do, uh, launched uh, a, a prototype or some pilots with iGov. Uh, or QA. This is electronic services to the citizen, and we, uh, with the help of uh, civil society, will get it implemented. But there is one more to this. On the last National Reform Council, we, start, uh, the, we discussed uh, uh, code of ethics uh, for civil servants. Uh, when you compare Ukrainian code of ethics, it's like a couple of pages, and when you look at the US, it's like this thick, which explains bits and bits pieces how the public servants need to behave in different circumstances. Gifts, when they're appropriate, when they're not appropriate, what's the limit, how you behave, how you inform of your conflict of interest. This is a terra incognita for many um, government officials. An opinion poll was recently conducted by the Democratic Initiative, which showed almost 50% of Ukrainians believe that no reforms have taken place. Is the Ukrainian government doing enough to show people the progress that has been made? That's right to the point. I think that the, our ability and our stories on communicating it been very, was not enough. Uh, we've been under-communicating uh, the reforms uh, both internally and externally. Some of the reforms that have been kicked off uh, are not that visible. But there is a lot of reforms which are done very, very rooted. For example, when you look at the National Bank of Ukraine, when they put a very important uh, law of responsibility of the shareholders it's basically stopping the practice where people been ripping uh, citizens uh, from through the banking system, taking the money, collecting the deposit, investing their own business, bankrupting bank, and then people left with, with losses. Now there is a responsibility for those who own it. So there are, unfortunately, the challenges in communication. The challenge is uh, in actually seeing uh, or presenting uh, fast wins and not explain how some of the things that we're doing today are going to impact uh, the development in the future. Mr. Shimkiv, what is being done to combat trafficking and trans-international crime in Odessa? I think that uh, in trans-international crime uh, been going through there, a lot of their passes going through the Ukrainian territory, uh, things like drugs, uh, smuggling, uh, alcohol smuggling, uh, cigarette smuggling, a lot of illegal activity. Even if you look in the back back history of high-tech hacking activity, the first underground market for hockey was created in Odessa. Uh, Odessa has a lot of potential as a creative place. Creative place. Look at the today what how many great companies been created here. Look at the real, look at their um, you know uh, luxury and many other cases here. At the same time, there is uh, cases where the, the smuggling using the ports where they can approach, and from the port they uh, can move further to Europe. And again, this is a strong place for us to execute reform on the customs, because that's the place where, uh, where we need to reform, um, ensure that there is no corruption and acti illegal activities at the border. We need to make sure that uh, uh, this is also related to the tax reform, in terms of transparency. It's also related to employment of people or self-employment in Odessa, thus making sure that there's a full transparency and they're employed versus actually serving cartels and so on. And this is again a question for international community to help us in fighting this. This is a big fight. It's an international fight for, uh, against criminal uh, groups which are leveraging the international uh, environment uh, to drive their illegal activities. You have been watching Ukraine Today, where we have been joined by Mr. Dmitro Shimkiv, 
the Deputy Head of the Presidential Administration. Thank you for watching.